like the band I'm here to tell you my people Stay focused on the goal that lies ahead I know sometimes you are tempted Satan's on his job, he knows his craft If you submit your life to Jesus Speak to your storm, it will pass Don't look left, no, don't look right You in the fight There are no shades of gray in Christ There are no shades of gray in Christ From the tree my father sees inside of me me. Made in his image by his hand Carry out the master plan Not on the work but through his son I trust in Jesus, he's the one My willingness to worship him Supplies the strength so I can win Straight and narrow is the way Hear what I say There are no shades of gray in Christ There are no Shades of gray in Christ. There are no shades of gray in Christ. There are no shades of gray in Christ. No, 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 no. tell you, I don't know how anyone cannot come to the Lord behind that kind of singing. You know, it's so funny that you mentioned that because I was just thinking that if Bobby gave his life to the Lord, then my life would be complete. In what way? Because then I could make the wedding plans because you know I ain't marrying no heathen. The man I marry has got to know the Lord. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, right. Deacon Miss Paul. I'll see you later. All right, see you later, Sharon. Girl. Mm. I tell you, your singing gets more powerful every month. Now, I hope I didn't distract you too much, but I couldn't help but shout all the way through that song. Taking the support, <laughs> thank you. But you know what? It was all about the Lord. When the Holy Ghost is in the house, everybody else has got to take a back seat. It ain't about Lisa. It's about God. Now, it sure enough was about him today. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Now, where is that handsome boyfriend of yours? Now, you know he needed to hear the pastor's message, and he surely needed to hear that song of yours. Mm-hmm. I tell you to the utmost. Jesus, say. All right.
right there. Don't you get me started? <laughs> Where is Bobby? Uh, he's around here somewhere. He said he'd meet me here, so I'm expecting him. You know, he came calling me this morning at about 10.30 talking about he overslept. I'm gonna tell you what the real story was. He was out all last night partying and doing Lord knows what. And then he come talking about he needed to pick me up late. I told him he could find his way here any way he could. Had to give him a piece of my mind. I hear you, but you know, he's such a fine young man. I just pray he gives his life to Christ before it's too late. Well, you better make it quick, cause I'm not waiting all my life to get married. And I'm not marrying no man that ain't five baptized and Holy Ghost filled. But don't rush him. God will draw him in his own good time. Well, I'm not rushing God, but I hope he does it quick. <laughs> All right, now. I always say be careful what you ask God for because he might just give it to you. Well, if that's the case, give me your hands. Say a quick prayer. Dear Lord, save my man right now, Lord. Amen. <laughs> hey, Lisa. Hey, Deacon is forward. How you doing? Mm. Wonders never cease. I don't know if it was my preaching or your singing, but God sure enough he is good. Yes, he, he sure is, is Pastor. Praise God. <laughs> no, Lisa. I mean, God is really good. Don't you know right after the service, Bobby came into my study with tears in his eyes. Now, I could see something was different about him. I could see God dealing with his heart. That young man gave his life to Christ, and we prayed. And if I've ever seen God save a human being, he saved your Bobby this morning. Now, Pastor, you're not playing with me. You mean Bobby Scott, my Bobby Scott? The one and only Mr. Cool himself. So, so he ain't so cool right now. When I left him in my study, he was shouting and praising God. Oh, no, Pastor. I'm right here praising God. I ain't never felt so happy and free in my whole life. Mm. If I'd known that anything could feel this good, I would have come to Christ a long time ago. I'm so glad that he didn't cut me off while I was still in my sin. Oh, hallelujah. Praise his name. Now, Bobby, don't you play with God. Lisa, baby, I ain't playing. God has really touched my heart. I just want to thank you, baby, for insisting that I come to church today. Even though I was suffering from a hangover, but... Baby, I just thank you. Mm. Thank you, baby. Mm. Thank God. Well, I thank God as well. You know, Lisa, I told you your singing had a special power to it today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? I still feel it flowing. You know, I think I'm just going to go home before I start shouting again. <laughs> Take well, it. I got to be going too. Now, Bobby, I want you to contact Deacon Murray. Uh, he'll let you know about new members class and baptism, all the particulars, you know? Sure, Pastor, no problem. Okay. You know that word pastor has a good ring to it. <laughs> oh, baby, I can't wait to get home and tell Ma. We can finally praise God together, Lisa. Can you believe it? <laughs> to the utmost, Jesus said. Whew. Joyce, Bobby shows all the signs of being for real. Yes. Girl, I ain't never seen that look in his eye. <laughs> I'm very, very happy, yes. Girl, I think that's him now. Look, are you gonna be at Margie's tonight? Okay, I'll see you there. Bye-bye. You just leaving your door open nowadays? What's up with that? <laughs> hey, honey. What's going on? Mm -hmm. uh. How you feeling? <laughs> Baby, I'm so high. I, I just want to serve the Lord every chance I get. Bobby, I am so proud of you. I'm very proud of you, honey. Well. I'm just glad that you didn't give up on me, babe. Well, it wasn't so much not giving up on you. I didn't give up on the Lord. Well, praise God. You know, when I shared what happened to me with my mother today, 
It's like she couldn't stop crying. For the first time, I made her cry over something good that I've done. You know I've caused her so much pain over the years. Getting strung out with coke, losing job after job, stealing the money, going to prison. I'm going to make it up to her, babe. For every second of pain I've caused, I'm going to bring her joy. That's wonderful, honey. Just take it one step at a time. Now, I don't mean to rush this, but are you ready to go? Ready to go away. To Margie's, remember, it's her birthday party dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, can't we just get a gift or something? Isn't there a service at church tonight? Yes, it is, Bobby, but it's not one that you and I have to go to. But baby, look, I want to go. Look, I'll tell you what. Don't you tell Margie something very important came up. I really feel like going back to church tonight. But Bobby, first of all, I told her that we'd be there. Secondly, I have food to bring. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and go over to the party, and I'll rush over right after service. But Bobby, I don't want to do that. Lisa, baby, come on. Come on. I'll see you later. After all, we still got some wedding plans to make, baby. Well, all right, you can go to church. But you better be at Margie's house right at 9 o'clock. Don't have me waiting on you. I promise. Come on, I'll drop you off. I don't want to miss a sermon. Thank you, honey. Come on, please don't be angry at me. After service, I just stood outside talking to Minister Holmes and time just got away from me. You know that man has an amazing testimony, Lisa. Bobby, I don't want to talk about Minister Holmes' testimony. I done heard that same testimony a hundred million times. I just can't believe you had me sitting out there waiting for you hours after the party was over. Look, baby, I said I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? No. Come on, baby. Please forgive me. I said I'm sorry, baby. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it say that in the Bible you gotta forgive me like 70 times 70 or something? At least five more times. <laughs> Call yourself a real Christian. So goofy. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? I think I could be a little bit more forgiving if you come around here and rub my shoulders. Not that, baby. Not that. Now, you know what? I think I could be a whole lot more forgiving if you do me the favor of undressing me. Uh, baby, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why not? Because it could lead to something else. Well, that's the idea, silly. Well, baby, in the guest minister's message tonight, he said that fornication is a sin. Bobby, what in the world are you talking about? In his sermon tonight, the guest minister said that we Christians must not be involved in fornication. You know sex before marriage. <laughs> we Christians? <laughs> Bobby, you just gave your life to Christ this morning. You have a whole lot more growing up to do, more Bible classes to go to, more churching to do, before you can call yourself a Christian. And that's what I want to do, baby. I love you so much. I just don't want to sin against God or dishonor you. <laughs> dishonor me, baby. No, Lisa, baby, I'm serious. Let's just wait. Wait for what, Bobby? Until we get married. Until we get married? What are we supposed to do in the meantime, Bobby? Sit around here and hold hands? <laughs> okay. I can see you getting upset. Let's just talk about it tomorrow. I'll call you in the morning. You just gonna leave? 
can can I at least get a hug or something? Love me. You tell me that you love me. Being in love hasn't crossed your mind. The many times I call on you, you can't find the time to stop or even talk to me. Time is God, I wanted him saved, but not this saved. Within your heart, it's no longer time. To cry, stop your crying. Yes, there is no other way to get through day, the seen and unseen. I've always been at your side. This is beautiful. Well, there's nothing too nice for the finest, most beautiful woman in the world. Besides, this is a special occasion. Oh, really? Well, what is it? It's not my birthday. You do know that my birthday isn't until next month. Of course I do. <sighs> well, what is it? You have me in suspense. What's going on? <laughs> well, you shouldn't be in that much suspense because we've been going together for, what, five years now? Five years, two months, and 13 days to be exact. Exactly. My name is Diane, and I'll be a waitress this afternoon. All right. Can I start you off with something to drink? Thank you, Diane. You got excellent house chardonnay? Uh, actually, ma'am, we're Christians. We don't drink. And neither should you. Do you know Jesus Bobby. Christ? What? Please excuse him, ma'am. I'll have a virgin daiquiri, and he'll have a Coke, and we'll order when you get back. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Bobby, you don't have to do that, you know. Do what? Wear your Christianity on your sleeve like it's a badge of honor or something. Bobby, that young lady is just doing her job. And if you stop preaching for a moment and listen, you'd know that. Well, I'm proud of the fact that I'm a Christian and you should be too. After all, that's what you prayed for, remember? Don't remind me. Anyway, where were we before the waitress even came over? That's right, I was about to tell you why this is such a special occasion. But I think that I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> Bobby is beautiful. <laughs> Should I get on my knees now? You know, you don't have to do that, honey. Well, you did say that you love me. And if I ever got serious about the Lord, that we can have life together. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby Scott. What's up, dog? Man, it's been a long time. How you been? Oh, man, just chilling, man, just chilling. I hear that. All right. Uh, excuse my manner. Let me introduce you to my fiance. Fiance? Uh, Fred Thompson, I want you to meet Lisa. The future Mrs. Bobby Scott. Oh, she's showing all that right <laughs> too, boy. Well, <laughs> this calls for a celebration. Uh, Soon up. Apke pass do Achebele Ruke Badu. Lick out. I'm afraid, man. I don't drink anymore. I'm buying from dude again, man. This weed got me here, thanks. I could have sworn you just said you don't drink. <laughs> I don't. You don't drink. <laughs> Woo! Man, I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't hear it with my own ears. Well, anyway, it's a pleasure to meet the woman who finally got Central High School's All-American clink, clink on lockdown. Let me tell you, I was a senior on the team that uh, he took to the state championships as a freshman. 
The man led the league in rushing and touchdowns. <laughs> man, we used to call him Big Score. Because <laughs> he's scoring almost as much off the field as on the field. You remember that, man? That was a long time ago, Fred. I'm ready to settle down now. And this is the one right here the Lord wants me to do it with. The Lord? Yes, the Lord. Look, Fred, on last Sunday, I did something that I'm proud of. I gave my life to Christ. Now, do you know Jesus Christ, Fred? Jesus Christ. Did we play against him in the state championships? No, Fred, look, I'm serious, man. Do you know Jesus Christ? Bobby, this isn't the time or the place to talk about No, him. this is exactly the time and the place, babe. Fred. Look, I can pray for you right now, and you can receive Christ in your life. Yeah, I understand that, Bobby. Look, man, um, I'm holding up uh, my date with that little honey right over there. What's up, honey? Are you serious? That girl is young enough to be your daughter. You need to get you a good church going woman. But first, you need to get serious about life and accept Christ into your heart. Man, I'm telling you, he'll make you a new creature. Now, Melissa, where does it say that at? If a man be in Christ, Oh, man, I forgot. Bobby, can't you see that Fred doesn't want to talk about that right now? Listen, just hold on one second. Fred, look, we go back to elementary school, right? I'm telling you, if you get to know Christ, you don't have any need to drink this garbage or chase women like we did when we was in our 20s, man. Idea, brother, look, let me write down the address to our church. Just look at, look at this as uh, communion. Fred, look, can I reason with you for just one minute? Look, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. I'm being rude to my date, man. Fred, can I reason with you for just a minute? I didn't introduce you to her, but I, I got her name, man. It's a shame she's buying. Still over there on 8th and Elm, right? Yeah. I'll holler at you. Ain't that a shame? I can understand. Well, before I met Christ, I was just like that. Yeah, and I kind of wish you were still like that. What are you talking about? Bobby, it's not your job to convert the entire world. Can you take it down a notch? You're starting to become embarrassing. Well, maybe I was a bit overbearing. Maybe it's just that I love God, and I want everybody else to love him, too. Anyway, back to the business at hand. I haven't received an official answer yet. About what? Will you marry me? I don't know, Bobby. You're just coming on a little too strong. <laughs> too strong? Lisa, babe, look, it's just that I love you. That's all. <laughs> Bobby, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about coming on too strong about God, about Christ, about religion. I thought that's what you wanted. I thought that's what you've been praying for. Yeah, I thought that's what I wanted to. You're a part of me as I'm a part of you. I love you endlessly, you know my word is true. Chosen soulmates, we're predestined for all times. I'm forever yours, forever you are mine. So when you come with me, walk with me, I'll be your guide, your one and only. With me, care for me. I will never leave you lonely. Demonstrating the way I true love can stay. Man, I passed a song. You showing me things I never even seen before. Like the way he broke down Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I, mean, I never even thought of that before. Honey, look at this dress. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah, you look gorgeous. Yes. But what do you think about what Pastor said about trusting God? Well, how do you think I landed you? I had to trust in God that he would take you away from a life of partying all night long and doing Lord knows what. Well, I tell you what. <laughs>
It had to be God through Christ. Because it's certainly when you're running off at the mouth. Bobby, I was not running off at the mouth. I was merely witnessing to you. Well, whatever. I'm just glad you didn't give up on me. From now on, I'm going to put all my trust in God. I mean with everything. Well, we're going to have to trust in God to pay for this wedding because I never realized the wedding prices were so high. I mean, look at this cake. That's $500. Well, it's a good thing that I got that raise I was hoping for. And think of all the money I blew trying to get rich quick. If I had the money that I spent on lottery tickets alone, I'd be a fairly wealthy man. If you had the money you blew on lottery tickets, you could have at least bought me a new car. <laughs> Instead of that crazy piece of mess I'm driving around in now. No, you thought you were so lucky. I told you to trust God. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pastor sealed it for me tonight. I had no idea that playing the lottery was a sign I wasn't trusting God. And I'm sitting up in class feeling all guilty with these pick five tickets in my pocket. <sighs> Can you tell me how wrong it was? Now, Bobby Scott, don't act like I never told you that playing the lottery was a sin. <laughs> just relax, baby. I was just kidding. I repented for that sin tonight at the altar prayer anyway. My lottery plan and poker days are done. From now on, I'm put all my trust in God. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start tithing next Sunday. Because I read right here in Malachi. Now look, honey. How about we do this? How about we put away your Bible? We put away my wedding magazine. I love the Lord, too. And I'm very proud of you for committing your life to the Lord. But tonight, we're just gonna relax, watch a little TV. You can hold me. You can hold me, can't you? I don't want to And if you really press to speak to the Lord, you can pray to Him silently to yourself about how we're gonna pay for this wedding. Let's see what's on. The big five numbers are. Now, if you have those numbers, your cash prize is $25,000. Once again, the numbers are Bobby, one. That's your zero, birthday, January eight, the 8th, 1968. Eight, it's the eight, same number you've been playing for the last couple years. Oh, yeah. Well, did you play that number last week? Of course I did. Well, where are the tickets? Where are the tickets? Right here in the trash can where they belong. $25,000. This is enough to pay for the wedding, and we can get a couple of pieces of new furniture, and the dress that I was looking at. Oh, no, baby, that's a trick of the devil. Pastor says it. What? Bobby, I don't want to talk about what Pastor says. Look, we don't need that money, baby. We don't need that money. We just got to trust God, baby. Bobby, what are you doing? Look, that's $25,000. I can't go to church let alone have my wedding there knowing I'm financing the whole thing with dirty money. What do you think Pastor gonna say if you find that out? Dirty money? Bobby, listen. First of all, the, the, the pastor doesn't even have to know. We, we don't have to tell him or better yet, we could tithe on a fifth of it and it would be like uh, a blessing to God, a, a blessing to the church, a blessing to the pastor. Bobby, we're not going to build a financial empire with $25,000. So what's the big deal then? What's the big deal? Bobby, the big deal is that I've been waiting 32 years for the only wedding that I'll ever have. The big deal is that you said yourself you wanted to pay your mom back the money that you took from her. Well, this money is going to allow us to do that. Trust me, Bobby, this is a blessing from God. No, baby, this money ain't coming from God, and I ain't gonna do it. Well, I am. Baby, give me that ticket back. No, Bobby. Look, ever since you've been saved, you've been acting like some kind of fool. Act like you got some sense. 
Now I'm just as saved as you are. So don't go getting all holier than thou and sanctimonious on me. Then we're going to take this money and we're going to have a beautiful wedding. Nah, baby. I can't do it. I know that it ain't right. I clearly heard Pastor say Bobby, stop telling me what Pastor said. But he's our shepherd, baby. He wouldn't lead us wrong. And I'm your wife to be. So who's more important, Bobby? <laughs> Lisa. Don't now Lisa me. Answer the question. Who's more important? Me or Pastor Robinson? Christ. And if you can't see that, then maybe you're not as saved as you need to be. You self-righteous, arrogant son of a... Now you get out. Get out. And don't you come back till you figure out who you want to be married to. What will I give? Brother Scott, to what do I owe this visit? Oh, wait a minute. Let me guess. Dum dum de dum. <laughs> well, not exactly. There's some issues we got to work out first. But nothing that we can get through through the grace of God, however. So, what can I help you with? Deaconess Ford, contrary to what Bobby might say, this is not simply about a lottery ticket. I wasn't even going to say that, Lisa. Bobby, can I finish? Furthermore, he's going to try to make me seem like I'm the bad guy. Like I'm not as serious about Christ as he is. I wasn't, but that's simply... wasn't going to say that evilly. Look, first of all, I just want to say, God has really been good to me, Deaconess Ford. Do you see what I'm talking about, Deaconess Ford? Do you see what I'm talking about? That's exactly why we're here today. Now, Deaconess Ford, you know me. I've been in this church since, what, I was three years old, singing in the Sunbeam Choir. And I don't recall anywhere in anybody's Bible where God required good Christians to be religious nutcases. I mean, Bobby is a fanatic. A fanatic? What do you mean? I mean, Deaconess Ford, everywhere we go, everything we do, Bobby's harassing folks, preaching, people we don't even know sharing the quote-unquote goodness of God. And I'm trying to tell him that all of that is not even necessary. Wait, aren't you the same young woman who came to me a few months ago asking me to pray and agree with you for Bobby's salvation? Yes, Deaconess Ford. But I didn't want him to become so saved, so saved that we can't relax, that we can't have a good time. I mean, Bobby has to go overboard with everything that he does. We can't even have a decent conversation anymore, Deaconess Ford, without him throwing God into it. That's not How you true doing, Bobby? At all. God is good. What's going on, Bobby? I'm blessed. Praise God. What is all of that? That's not true at all, Deaconess Ford. I just get excited when I think about how good God has been to me. Two years ago this time. Oh, my Lord have mercy. I've been in two programs for cocaine addiction. I even stole money from my own mother oh, on occasion. Lord have mercy. But ever since Christ came into my life, I just get so excited. God is really. Do you see what I'm saying, Deaconess Ford? Who is this man? Who is this man? This is not the man that you and I prayed for. This isn't the man that I fell in love with. He's a little too saved, if you ask me. <sighs> too saved? Lisa, it doesn't sound like that to me. It seems like Bobby has truly found Christ. And so that's what we pray for, isn't it? Yes, Deacon is for, but... Uh, no buts, Lisa. Just rejoice that Bobby has come as far as he has. I do, Deacon is for, but I guess my question is, how much further is this going to go? I mean, it's gotten to the point where we can't go to certain places. We can't be around certain people. We can't do certain things. I mean, I don't even think he's ever even happy anymore unless he's sitting up in church somewhere. I'm not that bad, Deaconess Ford. I just don't want to lose what I've received. I'm afraid that if I see some of the people I used to hang out with, and especially go to some of the places I used to go to, that I can slip right back to where I was. That's right. So how far is this going to go, Bobby, huh? I mean, the next thing you know, you're going to be telling me that you've been called to preach. Deaconess Ford, we have very little in common anymore except church. 
I just love God, Lisa. That's all. More than you love me? Uh, Lisa, you need to calm no, down. No, Deacon, this boy Bobby needs to answer the question. Now, Bobby, are you saying that you love God more than you love me? If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have ever laid foot in this church. And now you're saying that you love him more than you love me? Well, answer me, Bobby. Answer me. Well, I guess no answer is an answer, huh? So where does that leave me, Bobby, huh? Where does that leave me? In your place, I guess. You know what? I'm getting to the place where I can't stand you. I wish I had left you right where I found you, strung out and in the gutter. Lisa, you need to calm down. I'm sorry, Dignish Boy. She's just upset. That's Bobby, don't speak for me. I'm not a child. Let's just go, Lisa. I'm not going anywhere with you. Why don't you just go? Why don't you leave my church and go on about your business? Come on, Lisa. Now, you really need to calm down. No, Deacon, it's for you tell this man that this is my church. My grandmother was one of the founding members, and my uncle was chairman of the deacon. You know what, Lisa? None of those things really matter. Because when you think on it in human terms, this is just as much Bobby's church as it is yours. Now, in reality, this is the Lord's church. I'm sorry, Deacon, it's for it. I'm sorry. But this, this situation is all out of control. I mean, I wanted him saved, but not this saved. This isn't what I prayed for at all. Honey, things were never in your control in the first place. <laughs> all right, now. I always say be careful what you ask God for because he might just give it to you. Because he might just give it to you. Bobby. Could you wait out in the outer office for a few minutes, please? I want to speak to Lisa alone. Lisa, are you going to be all right? You want Bobby to give you a ride home? Deacon, Ms. Ford, I don't think I want him in my life anymore. This is really not about Bobby at all, is it? What? I mean, you asked God to save Bobby, and he answered your prayer. Yes, Deacon is for but... Yeah, but the truth of the matter is, you are not really ready for the true saved man that you asked God for. What do you mean? Look, you want a man whom you can control. You want a man who has a passion for you, but not necessarily for God. You want a, a church man, a man who will go to church on Sunday and be there for you the rest of the week. You want a man who puts you first in his life. And is that so wrong, Deacon is for? It's not only wrong, sweetie, it's not wise. Look, you've never really been loved until you've been loved by a man who loves God and puts him first. Deaconess Ford, I ain't never really been loved by a man, period. Not in the way that I needed to be loved. And now that it's happened with Bobby, with the way he's acting, I'm just scared. I mean, it's bad enough to have to deal with the world, but for God to be your competition? Baby, God is not your competition. Deaconess Ford, please don't get me wrong with what I'm about to say. But I don't want to spend every Sunday all day in church. I don't want to be here three and four days a week. Deaconess Ford, I love the Lord. You know this. But Bobby's the type of person who, he always has to push the envelope. You saw how he reacted to me talking about him being called to the ministry. And you know he's not ready for something like that. I agree. He certainly is not, but neither are you. So, Deaconess Ford, what am I supposed to do about getting married with something like that hanging over my head? It, you shouldn't. It, it wouldn't be wise. But on the other hand, I didn't clean him up and polish him up for some other woman to take him. Well, sweetie, you're just going to have to trust God on that one. It's hard, Deaconess Ford. I know. 
So what should I do about the wedding? Well, I think it would be a good idea if you waited a while. You know, at least until you see where God is going to lead him on this. And what about Bobby and I? Just love him. Be his friend. Deacon Ms. Ford, I have one more question. Would God forgive me if I cashed in a winning lottery ticket? <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. I'll talk to you about it later. So can I invite Bobby back in now? Sure. Bobby. Bobby, can you take me home now and give me a good night kiss? I promise I won't try to make you do anything ungodly. Sure, babe. Let's go. Oh, Deaconess Ford, can you hold on to this until the next time that we speak? Okay. I'll keep it right here in my safe. Thank you. Don't let anything happen to it. I won't. Thanks. You're welcome. So what's in the envelope? Oh, just something for a rainy day. that key away from you. And what happened to you? I was expecting you last week. I thought we had a date to go shopping. Oh yeah, Ma. Look, can we do that this weekend? Mm, I guess we'll have to. So please, tell me what was so important for you to miss a date at the mall? Especially when lunch was supposed to be on me. Wait, I wanna guess. <gasps> oh, <gasps> his name. Mmm, does it begin with a B? Now, Mom, you told me to always put family first. <laughs> Excuse me, but Bobby ain't family. At least not yet. And anyway, I thought I told you not to get serious about any man until he first gets serious about God. That's what I came to talk to you about. Last Sunday, Bobby gave his life to Christ. And you believe he's sincere? You do know some men will fake it if it's in their best interest, right? Come on, I don't want you to be gullible. There is a lot more to being saved than just an emotion or some little momentary feeling. No, Mom. <laughs> he's saved, all right. In fact, he's a little too saved. You know, kind of like Dad was. Well, that is good. Mm, I don't know if that's good or not. Come on, don't tell me now that that boy is saved. He's gonna try to weasel out of this relationship. No. In fact, he's pressing me to get married. Married? Lisa! Okay, what's the problem? Because right now, I would think you would be shouting for joy. For babe, your face. It's telling me something else. Ma, I'm worried. You worried about what? Bobby is showing all the signs of becoming just like Dad was. Well, I don't understand what's wrong with that. Your daddy was a good man. You know, in fact, 
he was the best man that I have ever known. And yes, he loved the Lord. And he sacrificed for the church. And that's the scary part, Mom. Scary? Yes, scary. Mom, look at how you're living. I mean, this is a far cry from how I grew up. Lisa, you know, when your father died, I just couldn't keep up that old place. And that's part of the problem, Mom. I mean, Daddy pastored First Baptist for 33 years. And you mean to tell me this is the best they could do by you? After he served them so faithfully? But I'm not complaining. No, Mom. You never complain. All you do is say the right things, mention the right people, show up at the right places. While meantime, Daddy was working himself to death for people who could have just cared less. And have you living in this cramped little place? You finish? I don't know why, Lisa, you have to always be so dramatic. You know our lives were not all that bad. Mom, speak for yourself. And are you really being honest? I mean, I, I can tell you that for me, life was hell. I'm sorry, Mom. I mean, look. I appreciate the fact that you and Dad raised us in the church. You, you did what you thought was best by us. And I love my daddy for that, but and all the time that he was alive, I never felt his love for me like I needed to feel his love for me. I mean, he was always too busy chasing behind deacons or missionaries or trying to save somebody else's family for financial ruin. I mean, I had to get my birthday shout outs from the pulpit. And mom, I don't want to live that kind of life with Bobby. But he's putting me in the same position. Well, he said, you do know that your father cared about you. But you know, I am not understanding why you have become so bitter. I am bitter, Mom. And I'm scared. Mom, you were the one that said that when you married Dad, he was one way. And then he got saved. And he became another way. And to me, that's totally unfair. It's like you, you marry one person and you end up having to spend the rest of your life with somebody else. Lisa, that boy ain't been saved, but one week, if he saved at all. And you already got him called into the ministry and pastoring. You know, we need to just calm down and let's talk about something else. Now, Bobby has asked you to marry him, so we could talk about planning that wedding you always wanted to have. Ma, I don't even think I still want to marry him now. Why? Is it money? It doesn't have to be money. But because Bobby is now more saved than the Apostle Paul, we can't even cash in a winning lottery ticket for $25,000. Lisa. <laughs> You know your father always preached that gambling is a sin. If financing his wedding is a problem, I can help. Look, your daddy set aside some money just for your wedding. And your mother would be honored. You wore the wedding dress that I wore when I married your daddy. Mom, are you even listening to me? Mom, I don't want to take any money that dad left for you. And I don't want to wear your dress. I want my own wedding dress. I don't understand why nobody can understand that. Please calm down. The Lord will open. Mom, that is the problem. I'm tired of playing second fiddle to the Lord. I had to deal with that with Daddy, and I'm going to be in that same position with Bobby. Are you listening to me? That's it, isn't it? I'm sorry, Mom. But yes, that is it. Mom, every day 
Daddy would leave me and go off to the church and spend all his days at the church. And then he would come home in the evening and it would be studying God's word in the evening and in the morning. And I'm concerned that Bobby is going to put me in that same position. Lisa, now you're exaggerating. Mom, I'm not exaggerating. And in fact, I bet you that if I married Bobby, that on our wedding night, instead of playing some romantic love songs, he'll probably put on Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Babe, if you're gonna be that paranoid about that boy, I suggest maybe you wait a while before you think about marriage. Give it some time. It's one of the most phenomenal things I've ever seen. A, a young man that can preach with such power and conviction. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You know, it was about two years ago that he came to my study with tears in his eyes. Now, I didn't know at the time just what he was going through, <laughs> but God did. Yes. And I mean, God <laughs> has brought him through. Y'all ought to talk to me today. Amen. Now, this young man, for the past two years, has been at attendance at almost every Bible class we've had here. Y'all ought to make some noise in this building. Now, now, at first, now this young man could hardly do anything else but tell others about the goodness of God. I mean, on, on the streets, in restaurants, even on his job. In fact, I believe one time he was reprimanded because of his zeal for God. But by his trial ceremony today, wait on the Lord. We can see that he has channeled his enthusiasm into a powerful ministry among the drug community and the prison population. Y'all ought to talk to me today. Single-handed. He is responsible for many, nearly 50 men and women joining our congregation today. And he continues. Did y'all hear what I said? I said he continues to work with our boys program and our drug prevention program. Talk about being an example for the Lord. He has become just that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all know me. I, I said y'all know me. And when I get excited about the Lord, you know I could talk all day. But, but what we gonna do, we gonna give way to this young man for remarks. So I'm, I'm proud. I am proud to present to you our newest minister. Huh? Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Our newest minister. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Minister Robert Scott. I am certainly humbled at those words coming from my pastor. In a very real sense, he has become 
my mentor, my role model, and my friend. I have so much to be thankful for today, I don't even know where to get started. So let me start where I started, with my beloved mother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thank God for a mother that stood by me and believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. That's right. That's right. I thank God that she never gave up on me, never. even on my darkest day. And I'm not talking about the day that I was sentenced to two years for drug possession. Well. I'm not even talking about the day that I realized I had a true drug and alcohol problem. Well. I'm talking about the day that I violated her trust in me. Oh, Jesus. Mm. By stealing from her purse. Oh, Jesus. Mama. I thank you. Now I know, I know I owe you much more than this. But I gotta give this back to you. Because I stole this from you. It called you a liar when you confronted me about it. $193. Mama, I'm deeply sorry. I will one day make it all up. You know, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. And I don't really know what to say. But I've been praying day in and day out for this day to come. I know you have. The Lord has answered my prayer. Y'all, this is my baby right here. This is my baby right here. This is my baby. And now to my crew at Drug Free Inc. All right, now don't act like you act like you don't got no home training now. My pastor's here. All right, all right. I got to give a shout out to the group of the finest young men in this city. You are men with whom I can identify because we have all walked the same painful path. Now, I know you give me a lot of credit, but we struggle together. My healing was facilitated by God allowing me to minister to you. Now, we can't forget that it ain't over. No, sir. We can't afford to let our guard down and think that we got it made because the devil is still on our trails. We got to take this one day at a time. Watch out, man. But through the help of God, yes. we will make it. And we will be able to go back out into the streets and help our brothers. Can I get an amen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And let us also remember that to keep Jesus Christ first, because it ain't about the talk. It's about the walk. Go ahead. And let us always remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, is. And finally, lest I hold you too long, because as a preacher, I can be pretty long-winded. It's all right, <laughs> But there was a young lady here today who brought me to this church. Now, when we met, I walked and talked a lot different than I do today. When I met her, I was high. High on coke and myself. But today I'm high. High on Christ and his power. Yes, sir. But I know, I know, I know, I know I got on her nerves with my zeal for Christ. I was a bit overbearing, if you will. 
I love Christ so much that I practically wanted to ram him down the throats of everybody that I met. Yes, sir. But I have learned since then that if I but lift him up, that God would do the drawing. Can I get an amen? Yes. All right, now, don't push me because I can feel another sermon coming on. Go ahead now. Go ahead now. I asked this young lady two years ago a question. And she has had me on hold ever since. And I just want her to know that I'm still waiting on an answer. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Well, I guess I'd like to say that uh, the conversion of Minister Scott had less to do with him, and to a larger extent, it had to do with me. You see, I, I wanted Robert saved, but not for Christ. I wanted him saved for me. See, I, I wanted him saved so that I could say that I had a saved husband. <laughs> but you know what? God is always in control. Because something happened that I hadn't counted on. In my opinion, Robert got too saved. So saved that he forced me to take a good look at myself and my own commitment to God and Christ. So I'm, I'm not going to talk forever, but I do want to say that Robert, I still don't know yet. I, I'm not certain if I'm strong enough to provide you with the level of commitment that you need. I'm worldly and I'm scared and I just don't know. A, a major life decision. So it's only natural that you're fearful. In fact, if we change your suit and put you in an 80s hairdo, you'd be a perfect picture of me about oh, 20 years ago. But Mrs. Robinson, I just don't know if I'm ready yet. I mean, I want nice things. I want a nice house. I want a nice car. I want children that can be children. And a husband is just a husband to me, not a pastor to a congregation. And I want privacy. I want a life outside of the stained glass and sanctified walls of the church. But how can you have that with a pastor? When I think about the life that my parents led, the way they sacrificed, the nights that I cried myself to sleep because I miss my daddy, as much as I care about Bobby, I don't know that I'm ready to live that life with him. Well, Miss Lisa, let me ask you a question. Do you love Bobby? Yes, Mrs. Robinson, I do. Well, how much do you love Bobby? 
with all my heart. But does that mean that I have to sacrifice the way that I want to live for him? Well, Lisa, if you love Bobby, then stop leaning on your own understanding and trust God. You know, a life in ministry is not necessarily a life of, of refinement and enclosure. It's not about the kind of sacrifice that you have already pictured it to be. So Lisa, if you love Bobby, don't let him live his life without you. Because Lisa, he's going to need you. <laughs> and the more God elevates him, the more he's going to need you. <laughs> Girl, mm, he's going to need you when he doesn't even think he needs you. He's going to need you to be with him when he tells you to stay home. You know where he's going. He's going to need a real friend, a companion. You know, someone who will hold his hand, understand his commitment, and his passion. So Lisa, if you love Bobby, don't let him shoulder the burden of ministry alone. But Mrs. Uh, 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 now Lisa, I wouldn't dare sit here and tell you that if you marry Bobby, you're not going to have to sacrifice. Because you will. Now I'm not saying that you won't have to share your husband with other people. Because you will. Lord knows, as an older pastor's wife, I have made my share of mistakes. I admit that. That's why, Lisa, I want you to know that if God leads you to marry Bobby, I'll be here for you. You can call me, and we'll talk for as long as you need. But, Lisa, if this is the man that God has ordained for you, don't let fear keep you from him. Because you know, fear and love can't exist in the same space. <laughs> now, I didn't say that. God did. So you trust God. You trust him. He'll take care of the rest for you. Thanks, Mrs. Brown. You're welcome. All right, baby. All right. Come in. Home. Yes, Minister Scott, I guess I do. Lisa, look, we're getting the list together for the women's retreat next spring. You think you'll be able to make it? I don't know, Deaconess Ford. I guess I'll have to check with my husband. What did you just say? I said, I guess I'd have to check with my husband. A minister's calendar can be very busy. Oh, Lisa, baby, I'll never forget that. <laughs> I know you won't. I won't let you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one more thing. Now, you gave me this envelope about two years ago. I've been keeping it in my safe ever since. So what do you want me to do with it? You know that? You can just throw that away. If you submit your life to Jesus, speak to your storm, it will pass. Don't look left, no, don't look right, you in the fight. There are no shades of gray in Christ. There are no shades of gray in Christ. It doesn't fall far from the truth. 
tree My father sees inside of me Made in his image by his hand Carry out the master plan Not on the work but through his son I trust in Jesus, he's the one My willingness to worship him Supplies the strength so I can win Straight and narrow is the way Hear what I say There are no shades of gray in Christ 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 No, no Cry